Number one says rewrite the rational function g of x equals x minus 4 divided by x in the form g of x equals c plus r divided by x, where c and r are constants. So in this case, when we just have this x on the bottom, we can just divide each of these terms by x. So we're just going to take and separate g of x and take x divided by the bottom and negative 4 divided by the bottom. So then x divided by x is 1. And now they want us to have a plus, so I'm going to throw this negative up with the 4. So I'm going to put a plus, and then I'm going to put negative 4 over x. Since they wanted us to have a plus in here, I don't think it really matters. You could just leave it as minus um, 4 over x. You could probably just leave it like this as well. Um, but I can change it. We can change it to plus a negative 4 over x also. So then our c value here is 1 and our r is negative 4. Number two, the average cost in dollars per mile for riding x miles in a cab is modeled by this equation. As x gets larger and larger, what does the end behavior of the function tell you about this situation? So we know if we take and divide this x into both pieces and write it like we did in the last one. So if I do 2.5 divided by x plus 2x divided by x. So then um, here we would get c of x equals 2.5 over x. So that doesn't simplify. And then 2x divided by x does simplify. So that simplifies to 2. Then um, we'll see that this is the constant. So a lot of times you're kind of used to having it as the 2 here and then plus the 2.5 over x. So as our x's get larger and larger, okay, so then this will be 2.5 divided by a really big number. So this is 2.5 divided by a million, okay, this is basically non-existent. This is so small. So as our x's get really, really big, this basically goes away. So our function approaches 2. So the end behavior here approaches 2. So as x gets really large, okay, f of x approaches 2. And so what does that tell us about this situation? That um, the more and more miles that we go in this cab, Okay, or that we ride in this cab, the closer and closer the cost will be to $2 per mile. Or, yeah, per mile. So this kind of fixed fee of $250 basically is irrelevant by the time we've, we've traveled a lot of miles. Number three, the graphs of two rational functions, f and g, are shown. One of them is given by the expression 2 minus 3x over x. Which graph is it? So if we kind of take a look at this and we just divide each of these. So if I do 2 over x minus 3x over x, this would simplify to 2 over x minus 3. And that constant is going to be your end behavior asymptote or your horizontal asymptote. Um, and so this one, this horizontal asymptote matches right here. So we can see this down at y equals negative 3. So this um, f of x is this function. Number 4, which polynomial functions graph is shown here? So this one we can kind of see with the zeros. So let's take a look at each of these zeros. So this has a zero of negative 1, a zero of positive 2, and a zero of 5. So remember that the factors that go along with these, okay, um, are going to be kind of the opposite. So this is going to be x plus 1 would give us a zero of negative 1 x minus 2 would give us a 0 of 2, 
and x minus 5 would give us a 0 of 5. So we'll look for those. So x plus 1, we need minus 2. So this does not work. Plus 1, minus 2, minus 5, that's good. So then we can see that these ones start with minus 1, which isn't good. So those are out right away. Number five, state the degree and n behavior of this polynomial function. So when we're using polynomials, we care about the leading term or the term with the highest exponent. So our leading term here is negative 2x to the fourth. That tells us our degree, which is the exponent. So our degree is 4. And then our end behavior will deal with that this exponent is even and our leading coefficient here is negative. So when you have an even function, the branches or the end behaviors, the arrows are going to point the same way. And when it's negative, those arrows are going to point down. So as um, x gets larger and larger in both directions, so in the positive and the negative direction, f of x is going to get larger um, in the negative direction. So as our function goes to either side, because remember this, the x's, okay, positive x's are the right side, negative x's are the left side, our graph is going negative or down. So on the right and the left, the graph is going down. Number six, the graphs of two rational functions, f and g, are shown. Which function must be given by this expression? So now when we look, we can see um, a dotted line for the vertical asymptote. So remember that vertical asymptotes is where the bottom equals zero because we can't have division by zero. So the bottom is x minus three. So we'll figure out when that equals zero. So add three to both sides and you get a vertical asymptote at x equals positive three, which is for the f function. So this is um, the function of f of x because that has a vertical asymptote at three.